Hello everybody, hello everybody, and welcome back, and welcome back, and welcome back to my channel. And tonight, we're going behind the scenes of one of the some known, uh, and now, 22 years later, we're taking, uh, it's one of the OGs, from the spookiest secrets from behind, secrets behind Halloween Town franchise. Oh, and by the way, don't look under the bed. Don't look under the bed. <laughs> How does colorism affect your life? Does it affect it at all? Do you even notice it? Tonight, I've asked 15 of my peers and colleagues to share their experience on the subject of colorism in Black America. I wasn't comfortable around my own people. I equated like darker skin and all that with people who I were, was afraid of. Wide nose, big lips, you know, things like that, dark complexion. Some light skinned women, I feel like, do think that they're prettier because it was like that for so long. Someone had literally told me, I know you have a pretty vagina because you're a lighter skin tone. What? Yeah. If they're dark skinned, then there's something very special about them, like light eyes or something, something. And it's never gonna go away. I I, I hate to like be like a Debbie Downer, but like it's gonna be a thing for like a very long time. But if you have a problem with the way black people are seen, the only way to change how they're seen is shifting the standard. I know how hard it is to be black already, you know? And to then have your people tell you that you can't fit in because you're because you're too dark. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts even me because I know my friend Bryn, gorgeous. There's no butt behind it. There's no, maybe if they were this, no. The way she is, the way that they are, gorgeous. And that's all that matters. Nearly 500 theater artists gathered in New York City and marched for equity, change and transparency within the actors' equity and the theater industry as a whole. The interviews you're about to see are just from some of the people who were involved during the making of the movement on that day. This goes to show you that people may feel insignificant. You may feel like your voice isn't heard, but it took two days for him to step down. And then after that, you know, we've been having meetings with equity and they're changing things around too. And I'm like, Yes, this is not an overnight process, but we're getting changed quicker than I imagined, 100%. I didn't think Scott Rudin was gonna step down. I thought we would have to like claw him, basically drag him down. This is a respected art all over the world. And if we could have that art represent what the whole world looks like and come from the entire world, I think that is really a dream. That's that's a dream because like, yes, we made some big, big leaps in the last couple of weeks and they've been incredible, but we have so much more work to do. And that was the main reason why I was celibate for five years. Because of your weight? Basically like guys just turned me away. Have you seen the same people who turned you down back then and look, they try to come at you now? Yes. I have a, what do I call it? Like a power moment almost. Like I get a kick out of it because I'll entertain it. Then I'll slide mm -hmm. in my DMs and I'm like, I'm, I'm well, I'm very well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I remember what you said to me, you know, you turned me away. You basically said, like, oh no, nah, you fat as hell. Like, I don't, you know, like they literally said that to me, you know? <laughs> they said you fat as hell and they just left? Yeah, they're like, I ain't doing no fat dick. And I'm like, ugh, rude. For you and for anybody else who like is thinking about losing weight or just making a difference in their health, it's all about progress and not perfection. And don't believe what you see in the media. Like don't believe even what you see from my stories that I put on like social media. Mm -hmm. Everybody's journey is their own and nobody's journey is gonna look the same. And always try to do your best every day, even though it's not gonna be perfect. Eat the good food, eat the bad food, do what's right for your body and what feels great for your body um, every day for you. Yeah, I feel like I've been crying all day, but we're gonna get through this video. We're gonna get through it. Just feeling as though I'm not good enough, I don't deserve anything. I really don't know what to do when those things happen. I kind of just lash out. Either I lash out within myself or I just lash out at other people and it was just not a good thing. I feel like I'm stuck in a mold, but not just like stuck in a mold, it's like how people see me, but it's just like a mold of how I see myself and how I see my life. Actually, about a month ago, um, my grandma passed. It's been, you know, a really hard road. She was 90 years old. Um, 
she lived in an Alzheimer's care facility. So I wrote this letter, Dear Grandma, what can I say about you? You are a brilliant teacher, a beautiful woman, and an even greater grandmother. Your presence has helped change and transform so many lives. And I know where you are, you can see that now. I love you for what you instilled in me and for always being there. I will never forget you. You live in my heart always. And I know you are forever around me until the next time we see each other again. Love, Boopy. I just want to dedicate that video to her. And um, yeah, I love you, Grandma. This, look at the camera, look at the camera, look. This is Bryce. He's the new member. He is a chocolate lab. I just had to get this off my chest because I just feel a lot of stuff like internally and I just feel like this would be the best way for me to get it out, talking about it. To be happy, to be happy. Thank you for listening to me ramble.